Shalom Chabrim, I'm Steve Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And yes, again, we have a situation with another shooter uh, in Dayton, Ohio. This time, 10 reported dead just after the shooting in El Paso, Texas. It left 20 dead. And of course, the official report that's being put out in both cases uh, is that it is lone gunman. The Dayton, Ohio, uh, they have a 24-year-old uh suspect that was actually killed in the the shooting attack that happened there early this morning in the wee hours of the morning in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, and uh, of course, El Paso, they arrested a 21-year-old. And of course, he is the one being accused of doing the mass killings of 20 people and wounding about 24. Uh, in the case of uh, Dayton, Ohio, the gunman allegedly used a, an AK-47 Kalashkinov, uh, AK-47 styled rifle in his rampage through the store. But oddly enough, as uh, we have been getting in some information in from friends over the last few days, and I say last few days because it's kind of suspicious that the Intifa uh, group was planning a, a, a pretty much a or what would you call it, a showdown in El Paso, Texas there. Uh, and then, of course, then we end up with this type of mass shooting. But the witnesses' accounts, information we got in from Dr. Rosa, doesn't match the narrative of the mainstream media. And also, on one particular video of the Dayton, Ohio shooting, clearly it can be heard in the video footage, not one, but multiple shooters. We're going to examine this evidence, and we want to thank different people. Uh, Brother Steve, who had sent me uh, the email the day before the shooting there, talking about the Intifa and what they would be doing. And as well, Dr. Rosa, who speaks fluent Spanish, uh, sent us the video there uh, to look at. Of uh, There's a couple of different witnesses there, one that spoke in Spanish that said that there were four gunmen dressed in black come running through the front door of the store. She was at the checkout line in Walmart and began to open fire indiscriminately at the people inside the story. Why isn't mainstream media telling us about these particular incidences and these witnesses? And there's more than one witness that has verified this information. And as I said, in the Dayton, Ohio video that I'm going to share with you in just a few moments here, it is very clear, especially for those of you that are uh, professional shooters, I say professional because of my own background there, uh, know very well when there's more than one weapon being used uh, in the background. So we're going to get into that. As we said, though, El Paso reported uh, that there were 20 dead thus far, I think 24 wounded in Dayton, Ohio, 10 are dead. And uh, 24 year old Dayton, uh, the guy that was the Dayton shooter, uh, uh, is uh, was killed at the scene. That's what we are hearing thus far right now. Now I want to take you. This is video footage, and <clears throat> keep in mind before I play this, the individual that was making the recording was using some very very bad words in the video. Uh, I actually have it pretty much timed at the part where we don't have that. I'm going to play two different parts of the clip. And for the purpose of this is so that you can hear the different shootings that are going on. It starts off clearly with a single uh, sounding of a shooter. Uh, and we're going to listen to this for about, oh, it looks like we're going to listen to about eight seconds of this. Listen to this. Alright, you can clearly hear the gun going off rapidly. Boom, 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 boom. Alright, if we jump over and um, to the 18 second mark, this is when, if you really listen closely, and I will try to up the volume here. Well, it's up to 100 there. Let's, let's look on the video here. That one's fully up. And uh, on our volume, everything's fully up. Listen here. This is when I can detect myself. It is two different weapons then going off in this segment right here. We'll listen to this for about uh, three to four seconds. All right, hang on. I must have got it in the wrong place. Let's back it up here. Right there. Yeah, 
it's hard to tell with the background noise and stuff, but it seems to be that you can hear a, a second type of weapon going off. It's almost as if we're hearing two different weapons going off. Now, I can't say because I don't do this for a professional profession as far as analyzing gunshot sounds, but from my own background experience, it sounds like to me that it was two different weapons, especially if you're listening to it here. I don't know how well it comes out on your end there. Uh, but uh, the individual was sitting in a car. You can see, uh, I'll back up a little bit, play a little bit of this again here. Let's go to this side here. Um, and it says on the screen here that Isaac was recording motorcycles waiting for me to get off when everything happens. So sad prayers for anyone affected. Listen to this right here. Okay, that's the first part there. And, of course, the people running. And it's obvious that there is more than one weapon being used, unless the guy's got a gun in each hand, which that's not what the police are reporting in that case there. That's the Dayton, Ohio uh, shooting, a live video feed, or not live, but a video video feed that was during live during the time that this was happening, uh, taking place there, that picked up the shooting of this attack here. And it does appear that there is more than one shooter in that case there. All right, now El Paso, though, uh, by the way, they're also uh, this is now being treated as a terrorist uh, act, a terrorism case, according to the U.S. State's Attorney. On this, Claudine Wong reported, U.S. Attorney in El Paso says they are treating this as a domestic terrorism case. We are going to do what we do to terrorists in this country and deliver swift justice. Hmm, that's interesting wonder why they're going to do it that way. Is it kind of like the case of Timothy McVeigh, where he could just uh, go to prison and announce that uh, he wanted a speedy trial, execute me quickly? Everything that was against the norms of laws in the United States of America, uh, only to end up uh, having his death faked, still breathing after he is pronounced dead? Let's hope this video stays on air after we put this up. All right, now, this here came from, um, actually, I picked this up just moments ago. Uh, Dusty, uh, one of our friends that watches our broadcast here, just sent me a notification. She was part of this particular uh, uh, information uh, or this little chat thing here. She'd made a comment on there, the Gateway Pundit. And uh, witnesses, uh, witness uh, Vanessa Sanchez says she saw a man in a black T-shirt and cargo pants pointing at people and just shooting. And again, like I said, that's what the narrative is going around, that it's a single shooter there uh, in uh, El Paso, Texas. But thanks to Dr. Rosa, we got this particular video sent to us. I want to play this for you. This is on Believe 3.0. Uh, it was published uh, yesterday, August the 3rd, after that, uh, and it says here, El Paso Walmart eyewitness saw three to four shooters with guns dressed in black near the checkout. Two videos, first one Spanish, second one's in English. The suspect had multiple Twitter accounts. One, he hated Trump, and another, he loved Trump. Very strange stuff here. Uh, Antifa warned El Paso, um, let's see, four days before... The pictures of the unrest of one of the suspects has two different types of pants. The pics, two different funds, uh, fundraisers for the victim set up within several hours. Uh, just some very strange things that are going on. And that's why I say we wanted to bring this to your attention uh, and as well. Before I play that clip, though, though let me just share with you as well. Uh, this was uh, the information. Let's see. <clears throat> It's actually this one right here that was sent to me by Brother Steve. He sent me an email the day before the shooting. The Intifa and Arcus are gearing up for a 10-day militancy training and siege of El Paso, Texas. This is on natural news. Uh, so the Intifa and Arcus are gearing up for a 10-day military training and siege of El Paso, Texas by J.D. Hayes for News Target. Uh, we wonder when left-wing extremists would try to pull off a John Brown event prior to the 2020 election in the name of freeing illegal aliens, and it appears we may not have much longer to wait. 
You think it's possible that uh, some of those in those dark shadows of what they call the, uh, oh gosh, the shadow government there, or whatever you want to call them, the, <laughs> they didn't take advantage of this particular Intifi and Arcus gearing up for their 10-day militancy training in Siege of El Paso to carry out this event right at that time? Uh, and I'm not any supporter of the Intifab anarchist either, but I'm just saying, it just seems a bit odd. So I want to thank Steve for doing that. And then, of course, Lieutenant, uh, Texas Lieutenant Governor tells Antifa to stay out of El Paso after Walmart shooting. Well, wonder who all was involved in this uh, particular event here. Let's listen to the witnesses and what they say. And again, Dr. Rosa confirmed to us that this witness was speaking about up to four shooters standing there at the register. She saw them run in with her children. Listen in, and then we'll also listen to the English sides of this. Her channel, he interviewed her right outside. Yes, get right there. Person doing the thing there talks about uh, the person interviewing. Let's go right into it. <laughs> So, ¿dónde estaba usted cuando pasó esto? Where were you when this happened? Cuando esto empezó. Estábamos en el departamento de ropa de mujer. Oh, estaban, oh, pues estaba, estaba diciendo que no, no, estaba pagando. No, no, ya íbamos a la caja. Íbamos a la caja y ya íbamos derecho a la caja. Cuando escuchamos los primeros balazos, que pensamos que eran golpes en el techo, cuando ya nos íbamos arrimando la caja, vi cuando entraron ellos por la puerta de enfrente. ¿Usted los vio enfrente? ¿Cuánta gente vio? She said four hombres is what she saw. Three to four hombres entering into the store dressed in black. That's her daughter. Okay, so he's he, she was he's asking her were they the police and she said no they were not the police that were going in there doing the shooting. Uh, now, they're going to go into English on this, so let's just bear with it just for a moment. I think it's important because, um, and I know at the beginning of the video, the, the lady here gives credit to the individual that, that made this video. Let me just pull back to that. We'll come back to this 3 minute, 43 second mark here. Um, I'm making some um, observations about that. One thing I want to make a note of, it's very important, is the mainstream media is saying there's only one suspect and only one person arrested right now. It's, it's about 7 p.m. right now in Texas. And, but before that, they were saying that there were more, there were a couple people arrested, there were possible multiple suspects, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I have a video here I found on Twitter of someone who, wit, who um, interviewed someone right outside of Walmart who witnessed it that there were three to four people, shooters, dressed in black, okay? And this is not in the news. Nobody's interviewing them. So I want to make a note of it before this disappears. There are people that are also getting their accounts shut down on Twitter just for, for reporting on the subject. Okay, so... All right, so that's what she's saying there. Now, before we go back to that 3 minute, 43 second mark, I wanted to see um, if she actually posted um all right i don't see the actual person that did the, the the twitter video okay here we go it's actually on the video itself all right so let's well make sure we just give credit to this man here ivan pierre agure 
uh, is the man that actually did the Twitter account video. Uh, Adriana and her two children were inside near the cash register when the shooter started. She says she saw three to four men in black as shooters. All right. So Ivan, thank you for your courage. I'm going to look you guys up and look you up as well. And I have no idea how long his stuff will stay up either. Let's continue on. Let's go back to that spot where we left off at and listen, continue to listen. Where were you? You guys got on the floor? After you heard gunshots, what after it sounded like? After my mom saw the people and she said, they're actually shooting. And then that's my mom. Did you speak a little louder? When my mom said that they're she heard the shooting, that's when my mom, and she saw the three men running, that's when she told us to come to the floor. And then you just started heading back. The emergency. So you heard multiple, sh you guys heard multiple shooters. Yes. Okay. Muchas gracias. I'm sorry, guys, I go through this. Thank you for telling us the story. Gracias. Thanks for sharing your story. Thanks, man. Now she's going to share. She's in there, too? You guys are both in there? Yeah. What's your name? Kiana. Kiana? Kendall. Kendall, where you guys from? Yeah, I'm from here. I'm from Tennessee. So you guys were in the Walmart just shopping back to school? No, we were going to get some food. The freezer section, and she's like, is there a shooter? And I look over across the... I was like, and I was like, is that gunshots? Because it, it, it was too consistent to be anything else, and it's like, that is. I looked past, and we were screaming, there's a shooter, and I, I saw motion, and then I came back, and I was like, there's a shooter, and we're trying to run and run and run, and we were pushing people out the way, trying to... Okay, so here's the second video. It's of the daughter. Now this video here is filmed by, or at least posted by, Jeff DeRicio, uh interviewing the daughter of the first uh, lady that was interviewed in this video. Listen to this one here. on this one on Twitter and ignoring eyewitness accounts of three or four shooters for a moment because releasing all security cam footage would prove or disprove that just a couple anyway you can listen to uh, this lady here you can go to her video to listen to what she posted as well which I, I want to thank her believe 3.0 for uh, putting this information together for people to look at there uh, as well as uh, Ivan Pierre Aguirre uh, and the other uh, group there that had also posted this information. You know, this is uh, citizens getting active and, and getting the news out there before uh, different entities decide to suppress the truth about what's really happening. And it's really interesting because it reminds me of the, uh, the shooting here in Florida at the school where, they, of course, they have one lone gunman uh, that is arrested and blamed for it. Uh, but clearly there were students that reported more than one. And, of course, even in, uh, like, police type of attire, in, like, uh, SWAT, I should say, SWAT attire uh, that were carrying out the, the shootings there. The one teacher that actually speaks about that, wondering, what was the police doing shooting at the kids there? Uh, because it's what it uh, uh, had the appearance of. Of course, not any insignias or markings or anything of that nature there. Uh, but n clearly not the shooter that was defined in the Florida shooting as well. And this is what is happening uh, across the country. There is an agenda, clearly, whether it's to disarm the nation, whether it's to bring about chaos, to bring about new laws. Uh, who knows? Who knows what the purpose of this is all for? But anyway... Listen, get, uh, leave us your comments down below. Uh, do keep in mind, though, that uh, for some reason, 
YouTube has decided to go against us on comments now. They're not letting people's comments on a video. We might get 50 to 100 comments that make it through. Unfortunately, that's not us. So if your comment's not making it up, I have no idea why. Uh, we've reached out, tried to figure out what's going on. We just don't get any answers back. And if you're not, if you're checking out our video, you're not subscribed, do click, click the subscribe button. Uh, on a daily basis, YouTube removes 50 people from our channel indiscriminately. Uh, and we're getting reports from you guys all the time. They're unsubscribing you. And uh, also as well, let me just remind you, the conference, August the 17th, uh, we'll be speaking about all kinds of these things that are going on, uh, but check out IsraeliNewsLive.org. Scroll down here, you'll see it, Orlando Conference, August 17th, 2019, and uh, you, can, you can go right there. Uh, you can see that. Uh, I have to do make the adjustment for Deanne Loper. She will not be speaking at the conference there. Um, myself, my wife will be the speakers there at the conference, so I'll try to make those changes. If you want to come, we need you to make a comment in the in the in this particular link right here. Uh, it is at the Embassy Suites by Hilton, two two five Shorecrest Drive, Ultimate Springs, Florida, which is East Orlando area. Uh, the seating is limited, as we said before. So place your comment there. We've got people that have been leaving the comments. Uh, we do have a lot of people coming. We're limited to 150. And uh, there's no charge on this conference. We really were hoping uh, to get a lot of the Spanish people to come, especially from the Florida area, other areas as well that want to come uh, to really help spread the word of what's going on in this world today. This major conspiracy uh, to, uh, to overthrow the Christian community and to place them under Talmudic laws. So we'll be speaking about those things. And also, if you want to contribute to the ministry, our address is always right there on our website, Danoon Institute, or in my name, Stephen Benoon, uh, at 8297 Champions Gate Boulevard, number 442, Champions Gate, Florida, 33896. So we thank you for your help and your support of this ministry. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the 17th. That's a Saturday coming up very, very soon. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Arab Tov, I'll be talking to you later this evening. Still yet, another interesting message.